Golfers use different types of clubs for different types of shots. Woods for long-distance shots off a tee, putters to gently roll the ball into the cup, and irons for everything in between. That's why in golf, choosing the right club for the shot is a key part of the game strategy. The heads of these golf clubs are made from aerospace-grade stainless steel. To produce them, the factory begins with a wax replica of the club head. To make this wax pattern, as it's called, they inject hot wax into a mold. They extract the pattern and snip off the bulk of the excess wax. Using hot wax as an adhesive, a robot joins several patterns to other wax parts in the shape of gates and runners, the term for the channels that guide molten metal into the casting mold. Then the robot dips these patterns into liquid ceramic material four times, with a shower of silica sand in between each coat. The ceramic and sand harden, forming a shell around the wax patterns. Then the factory melts out the wax. The shell is now a mold with which to cast the metal club heads. On the casting floor, a furnace heats steel bars to 1635 degrees Celsius, well beyond the melting point. Meanwhile, another furnace heats the molds to 980 degrees Celsius. This burns out any remaining wax. It also fires the ceramic, making it strong enough to withstand molten metal. The pouring technique is critical. The metal must flow at a consistent rate to prevent the formation of air bubbles. After five hours, a pneumatic hammer breaks apart the mold. Workers saw off the gates and runners, separating the club heads. Then they grind off the last remnants of the gates and runners. A turntable runs the club heads through a sandblaster, which gives the metal a particular finish. Next, they stick on a metal badge bearing the club's model name. They apply a dot of automotive paint. The color identifies the angle of the club. There are 12 different angles. Now they line the neck of the club head with epoxy. Then coat the end of the shaft with epoxy and slip it into the neck. A pneumatic hammer pushes the shaft in as far as it can go. The shaft is made of either extruded steel or carbon fiber. Now it's time to work on the shaft. First, they cut it to the right length, depending on the model. Then they put the shaft on a spindle and wrap the top 25 centimeters in double-sided tape to hold the club's rubber grip. They lubricate the tape and the inside of the grip before sliding the grip over the shaft. A laser line helps them align the grip in the right position. This is critical because the grip is the golfer's guide to correct hand positioning, which is essential to a good swing. Next, a computer reads the lie, the term for the club head's angle relative to the ground. Then it reads the loft, the term for the angle of the club head's face. The computer then tells the technician what adjustments to make. Once he's made the adjustments, the computer re-analyzes the new loft and lie to ensure they're perfect. Finally, the golf club goes for a weigh-in. The scale shows that this club needs another 18 grams to bring it up to spec. So they affix an 18 gram weight made of thermoplastic and metal. Actually, it weighs slightly less than 18 grams because they factor in the weight of the epoxy glue. It's this type of precision that ensures these golf clubs fit the quality specifications to a tee.